Okay, so I just pulled up to Paul's house. He's not out here yet. But <clears throat> it's week four of his punishment. So that being said, he it, it was coming. You know it was coming. So instead of you actually ordering wings, keeping them at my house, getting them and bringing them in the morning, I decided to go to uh, I decided to go to Tops and get him uh, ten wings. One, one, two, three, four, five. And there's like eight or nine in here. Eight, eight count. Sorry, but as you could tell. Any time in Buffalo, you look, the blue cheese is right there. Um, he will not be eating that. He will douse his wings. And I got the cucumber one more. <laughs> Just to mess it up. So I'm, I can't wait to see his reaction. <laughs> Don't forget to hit, ah, good job. <laughs> you, sir, <laughs> should you get, pick one or two, because I have two things for you. Uh, I'll, I'll take whichever one you want to give me first. Okay, I'll do this one first, because this, this one made me laugh. In my, in my wanders. Oh, no. No, 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 no. For me, from last week. Uh-huh. And... If this doesn't scream, oh, your God, attitude. It is absolutely me. <laughs> oh my God! Is this this is a requirement? This is a requirement. No, you don't have to because I don't want you to have to show your Tom Brady ass physique to everybody on the hashtag. Is it even cold? Oh yeah. <laughs> The cucumber. Cucumber ranch. Oh man, I don't know. There might be a revolt. Everybody thinks I'm a buttermilk man. <laughs> Is this right. considered cannibalism? <laughs> Can no. <you> want... <laughs> I think it's gonna be child abuse. We're gonna get pulled over by CPS. <laughs> I know. It's, you never hear ranch on ranch crime in the papers. But... <laughs> When do they treat bottles of ranch like, like, and like aspirin? Like, look at this. <laughs> it's a whole like process to get it open. Well, kids are just fiending to get their ranch. That's it. Yeah, ranch. that's it. Look at this. What are you guys doing? You're gonna huff some ranch? Oh my god. <laughs> This is so embarrassing. This sucks. It's nine o'clock in the morning. These are ice cold. <laughs> the evil crazy. You want to do that one? Who do you um, think will have more sex this season, Jerry Hughes or Ed Oliver? Ooh. All right. So, a little history on uh, Jerry Hughes' sack production with the Bills, right? So, we always talk about Jerry Hughes, you know. We want to see him get back to when he was, you know, in 2015, right? That's what they want. They want more. Give me more 2014, 2015 Jerry Hughes. That's what I want to see. I, really, I don't know. I, I don't know. <clears throat> well, Paul, I don't know. I can't. You, here's you, the deal. You asked me last week to have a serious conversation with you wearing those glasses. I don't think I can. I know, right? It's rough. Let's not forget that Jerry Hughes was third on the team in sacks both years that he had all that sack production. He was behind Marcel Darius and Mario Williams year one. He was behind Kyle Williams and Mario Williams again year two. So he was third. He wasn't leading the team in sacks. He wasn't even second on the team in sacks. He was third on the team in sacks. Yeah, the number was great. Like, you go back and look at it, you're like, oh, yeah, Jerry Hughes had all these sacks. It was a good year. He was third on the team that year. Jerry Hughes really, really needs that defensive line pressure to be effective. He's got to have it to be effective. Yes, yes, yes. As, as do many edge rushers. You know what I mean? they got to have very – there's only about a handful, and you could probably have a few fingers left over. Of guys that can create their own pressure, even being double teamed or chipped. There's not that many guys. <laughs> There's not that many guys that can do that. Uh, I just didn't want anybody to question, like, no, dude, you're just dipping it in blue cheese. No. No, the, the punishment is real. Oh, wait. Are these mediums? No, they're mild. Mild? Uh, it says it on the package. I made sure I got you mild. I was too busy crying. Yeah. With the fact Did you eat a banana this morning? Oh my gosh, it's horrible.
This is delicious. We gotta do comparisons because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if we didn't do comparisons. So you're talking about the cold front. Right. Hughes, Williams, Darius, Mario Williams. Right. Okay? That's what you got across the now if you look across, tentatively speaking, right now, Hughes, Oliver, Starr, and um and uh, Shaq Lawson. Right. Shaq Lawson is not the pass rusher that Mario Williams is. Oh god no. He's the edge setter. Right. Him or Murphy are more edge setting guys. Mario Williams is more of a threat in that respect, so maybe they were probably taking it back to chip Mario Williams more often mm-hmm. than Jerry Hughes, because Jerry Hughes, up until that point, was just a speed guy. Was a that, speed guy. Yeah, that struggled to get home. He wasn't even a starter until that year. That was his first year as a starter. Okay. Because he was, he remember, he was an outside linebacker in the transition. Yes, yes, because yeah. uh, the Colts were right. switching over. So then you got, who would that be the comparable of uh, Darius? You think Darius is more Oliver because he's more, yeah, he's quicker? Be. He's got Okay, be. so because then, well, I just want to go to Star and Kyle then. That would be your line. Yeah, and they're not comparable. Eat, they eat bodies. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but Kyle Williams shed yes, guys on the interior he did. way better than Star does. Yeah, he did, but but the fact is, Star will have to eat up two guys at least, or else you're, you're going to get killed by him. Right. If I you mean, left one guy on Kyle... I mean, he was more playing his responsibility than going after the quarterback. That was always someone else's job. But truth be told, Mario, a lot of the fans are going to say, well, Star is not your guy. Harrison Phillips is the Kyle Williams replacement. Okay. I mean, and, and if you're looking to recreate the cold front, you're still missing another piece. They rotate more than the cold front did. Oh, absolutely. The cold front was in a lot more. Yeah, they, yeah um, the snap count was a lot higher. That's why the sack total was so high. Yeah, exactly. So then if you want to... The 2015 version versus the 20, what's going to be the 2019 version. He's a little bit older, probably hopefully a little bit wiser. Uh-huh. Uh, has developed a few more, uh, but them two guys next to each other. <clears throat> uh, it, to say who would have a bigger sack total is is to me like our conversation last week with the wide receivers. Who's going to have the most receptions on this team? Yeah. If Stop. if two receivers now, don't go crazy right now with your ranch and your wings. If two receivers, if Brown and Beasley both had 80 catches, I'm not saying they're going to. If they did, all right, awesome. If Oliver and Hughes both have double-digit sacks, we're not going to complain about it. Brown and Beasley. Have I'm tell. I'm just giving you something I mean, you to think about. You're crazy like this. I'm gonna have to start checking you for signs of a stroke. That's why I prefaced it with, I don't say it's gonna happen. I'm just saying, if they bo- will I think will I think that they'll both have double digit sacks? I don't know. They rotate so much up front. Um, it's going to be hard to recreate those sack numbers because again, the rotation is is it happens a lot. I would sacrifice. I know it's going to sound insane. We talked about it last week. In 2017, they gave up 1,900 yards rushing. Yeah. Last year, they gave up 1,800 and change. Right. I would sacrifice 400 yards rushing. Either one of them not having double digit sacks. Yeah, I can see that. If they're both in the nine or ten range, I'm happy with it. I don't know who's gonna have more because they're gonna rotate, they're gonna do a bunch of different things. You could have Oliver kick out to end on a, on a third and twelve. <laughs> or a second and twelve. Yeah, let's take let's take our defensive tackles and drop them into coverage. No no no, I'm talking about put Hughes and Oliver at the ends, and you put uh, Harrison Phillips in the middle in a 3-4. Ooh. Yeah, no. no. Harrison Phillips isn't big enough to play the middle of a 3-4? I'm saying on an obvious passing now. Yeah. No? Yeah. No? Yeah. You don't think you can play the screen? No. What? Not with all those bodies on him, no. <laughs> Not all five are blocking him. I'm I understand like, you know. that. I understand that. <laughs> All right, let me see. Where was it? The ride's pretty smooth today. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because it is. It is actually noticeably different. It's a thousand dollar ride. Doesn't it feel good? No. <laughs> it's weird too because Jerry's. Everyone looks for the glamour stat. How many sacks do you? Have? Yeah. <clears throat> That's hundred percent right. He's got pressures. He has hits. He's got a. Yeah. He's got so many. You have to account for that animal, mm-hmm. either did. with a running back or a tight end or some somehow. 
But now here's the problem that lies for teams against the Bills in 2019. You have three other manimals on that line as well. Yeah. You can't just single up Hughes and say, okay, we're going to double star, we're going to double uh, Oliver, and we're going to let Lawson go. Right. You can't do it. No, you can't. You're right. Uh, it's, but that was that was what the question that I was trying to find in, on the community tab, and, and I will find it, um, where uh, the comment was about, you know, the Bills got gashed inside last year when they didn't get gashed at the beginning of the season, right? As soon as teams started running, you know, running the inside gaps, the Bills were getting torched. Why did that happen? And what did we do to fix that? Or how did we fix that this year? That was kind of the summation of what the question was. I will find it. Well, Oliver, you fix it. Now, here's the deal. But uh, does Oliver really fix it? I think he does. Because here's what happens. What I just said, you can't just block that those four with five. Right. You can't. So what does that force you to do? Force you to put a tight end or running back in or a fullback, even, if the team still have those. So what does that do to offenses that are in a passing NFL? Right. It, play, it they have to for, it forces them out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Maybe they want to go four wide. Yeah. They can't. No, they got to put a tight end in there to chip on Jerry. Mm-hmm. They can't. They got to put a they got to put a back in to make sure that he picks up the blitz on the back side. Or or if you know Edmonds comes up the middle, or if Oliver happens to leak through because you're going to one on one him because you want to double up and chip. You're forcing teams to change their entire <coughs> offensive scheme to block these guys. Right. And you don't have to blitz. No. So, without even a, an exotic blitz, you're off, the offense that you're playing against has to change up everything that they want to do. Now, who's the best equipped to handle that, unfortunately, for us? Who's been running double tights? I mean, the Patriots have been running double tights for years. That's, that's what they do. That's not to say that teams don't run double tight. What I'm saying is that many teams are moving away from that type of Look at all the tight ends that have been coming in the league. Yeah. They're not blocking tight ends. No. no Gronk's no, no. the last one. Yep. And we had one. We broke his ankle, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's <laughs> what happened. Thanks, Tyler Croft. <laughs> but I'm just saying is that that type of tight end is kind of a dying breed. And that's a discussion for another, another time. But what you're doing is you're forcing teams to have to go get those guys. Right. You right. think? You think Mike Gusecki is going to be blocking Jerry Hughes or chipping on Jerry Hughes? I don't right. think so. You think uh, we went to Dwayne Allen? No, not Dwayne Allen. Is he in the Patriots? He, not Who anymore. Ben Watson, seventy-five-year-old yeah. Ben Watson. You think he's going to he chip just get Jerry? suspended? Oh, I think he just got suspended. Who else do they have? Who's the tight end? They got the rook, uh, the second-year guy for the Jets. Tight end. Oh yeah, that everybody. But he's more of a about. receiving guy. Yeah. He's not a blocking guy. So right. you're gonna have to do something with. You're gonna have to go to a two back set or put a tight end in there that's usually used to blocking to right. handle this front. And right. I don't think teams are equipped to do that. Because Rick Hachilski uh, had mentioned this on the test drive video about concerns of the Bills in 2019. Uh, his comment was, "I know it's hypothetical, but why would you take your best pass rusher on a, on the second and twelve and an obvious passing down off the field?" I would argue that second and 12 is a more likely running scenario than it is passing throughout the league. Most teams would go in and be, okay, you're second and in distance now. You're looking to get something. Right? I, mean, you, you, I think you zig when you should have zag. What do you mean? That's, that's, that's what the second and 12 means. Like, teams think it's an obvious passing down. So you run to catch him off guard. Right. Get I, mean, yeah. half, I always say half the distance. If you're behind yeah. schedule, second and 12, I want to try to get half of it back to give myself a manageable third and six. Right. Now, do, what? how many plays are in the playbook, running and or passing, that have give me six six yards? Well, if they're expecting me to pass for six yards mm-hmm. and I run for six yards, it's different. Yeah. You're trying to keep them off balance. Right. Uh, I would run a lot of draws out of second and I 12. I agree. Um, but then again, I'm not a coach in the NFL. That's that's the comment I made that I was trying to be funny. Yeah. But I, I think it's it's both. If, if first and ten is both, mm-hmm. second second and twelve is both. Third and twelve is not. Oh yeah, no, that's obviously that's obvious. All right, obvious. but second and twelve, you still have the ability because you got to try to get half of it back before you get to. It. But like you said, I'm more of a conservative type coach. Mm-hmm. I want to make. I want to keep the ball. I want to stay on schedule. Exactly. That's what I want to do. All right. So if I'm third and six, I'm not entirely ahead of schedule, but I'm not entirely behind it where right. I could still run the ball. Yeah. 
depending on the look, the front, mm -hmm. how my how my back's running that day, how my linemen are blocking, depends on all that. If I'm gashing them for eight yards a pop on, on with the run, and on first down, I get sacked for two yards, and it's second and twelve. I run a draw. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, it's all about it's all about what the matchup is. You can argue both points though. You can I say, agree. listen, I want to throw on second and twelve. Well, third and twelve sucks if mm -hmm. it's incomplete. Right. But when you look at this defensive line rotation across the board, are you really losing much by pulling Star off the field in a second and twelve situation? Or do you leave him on in second and twelve? Do you pull him off in third and twelve? I pull Star off on third and twelve because I see no reason to have him on in in an obvious pass. I would situation. have a faster yeah. guy in there, or yeah, Oliver or, and Phillips on the inside. True, but the thing. Hey, it's easy. I cover two bases. I was I just say Phillips is there, Harrison or Jordan, so I cover no, both bases. I almost said the thing is. Oh yeah, you do love to say the already. Thing is. <clears throat> uh, if Star eats up two bodies and you want to try to free up Hughes or Oliver mm -hmm. on a pass rush without blitzing, I'd keep Star in. Yeah. That's the only reason. Right. I don't want to blitz, but I want them to get free to get in. If I take Star out, I'm probably blitzing. Yeah. But on third and 12, I, I don't think teams are looking at having a double cover Star. No? No. You don't think he'll get there when we only have one? No. I, I, Listen, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if he could chase down one of those assisted shoppers carts they have at Wegmans, the little rider shopping carts. I don't know if he could chase one down in a parking lot. So I'm really not too worried about Star getting to the corner. Listen, he gets all of his plaid shirts at BJ's. There's no way he's going to Wegmans. <laughs> Do I think that Jerry Hughes is going to put up cold front-esque sack numbers? Yes. You but do? I do. Okay. Um with less snap count, right? And I think he'll finally be in the top two in sacks on this team. I am so surprised at that. Yeah. Because McDermott, if you're right, and we're both right, and I didn't mean it that way, but if we're both right, that if this is Frazier's defense, mm -hmm. his defensive ends will get sack numbers. Yeah. If it's McDermott still, they won't. Yeah. It'll be all over. So Everybody will have an even yes, number of sacks. Exactly. That's the thing about McDermott's defense is, it's the guys were even across the board. Pretty much most of the sack numbers were pretty even across the line. But to get back to <laughs> why did teams gash the Bills up the middle, he had a rookie middle linebacker. You know, like it's... He had 121 tackles. Right. Yeah, no, I understand that. But I'm saying that the reason you're getting gashed up the middle is because you could pull him out. You could... You could get them out. You could get them out of out of slot. Are you saying that teams ran more counters in the near the end of the year, which hurt him because he would go first gap? He went first gap the whole season. Then. So I mean, even on play action, you can get him the wide. You oh, can no. move him wherever you well, want. Well, no, I'm saying is if they, if they did it more. I think the teams understood season. how to move Edmonds out out of the middle. That's bad. You know, because you, at that point, you have 12 weeks, 13 weeks of film on him. Teams are like, okay, well, here's the book on Edmonds right now. And that's something he's got to get better at because I think he gave up the middle a lot. But you also, you had Milano, right? And then your strong side linebacker was Lorenzo, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have second-year linebacker out there. And honestly, Lorenzo Alexander, he's not a very – he's been in the league for a long time, but – actually physically playing the linebacker position, it's that's just a Buffalo thing. He didn't really play linebacker until he got to Buffalo. So Babbage. Works wonders, man. Yeah. Rookie, second year, and a guy that really didn't play that well, and they play that yeah, cohesively. They, yep. That's right. Amazing. Yep, Bob Babbage, and then his son is also the safeties coach. <clears throat> so the communication between the safeties and the linebackers, linebackers is right at right in point. Right. Which is what makes that's this the defense next, so that's dangerous. An that you think that's an episode? That's a that's a that's a amazing point. I think it. Someone brought it up. Someone brought up Babbage. Did you? Did you mention Babbage? Well, somebody had asked about the linebackers coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somebody goes. So who's the linebackers coach? I'm, is he new? I was like, yeah, actually, no. Could be an episode this week. Could not. Who knows? 